Winter weather is going to be upon us before you know it, from cold temperatures to wet roads and yes, even some snow. Greetings from Beach Mountain. I'm Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich and over the next couple of minutes, I'll reveal what could increase or decrease our chances of seeing some snow. Last winter, we had three consecutive snow events and if you like that, you're going to love this upcoming winter because the impact on last winter was La Nina, which is in effect again this year for the third year in a row and if you forgot, La Nina typically means warm and dry conditions for the Carolinas, but occasionally, like we saw last year, La Nina can overproduce on snowfall. Here's a longer look at what those phases of El Nino, La Nina, and the neutral phase mean for our upcoming winter. Over the past decade, our average snowfall has fallen from 4.3 inches per winter to 3.5 inches, and this is primarily due to climate change. We have seen warmer ocean and warmer air temperatures, which has really reduced our snowfall totals. But because of that lower average, it's actually easier now to have above average snowfall in the upcoming winter. Now, drought is going to be an issue this upcoming season. I would expect most of the Carolinas will see drought conditions continue. Like the rest of the country, over 80% of the lower 48 is currently in drought. Now, because the temperatures are going to be warmer than average, I would expect one to two degrees above because of that La Nina pattern, which is very typical. That also means precipitation wise. If you look at precipitation, likely a little bit below average again for this upcoming winter because of the ongoing drought and then snowfall. That's what everybody wants to know about. I do expect above average snowfall this upcoming winter, but just a little bit, maybe an inch or two above average, even in a La Nina winter, you can get a couple of good storms like I do expect to overproduce on snowfall. So now I'm at the top of Beach Mountain to talk about specific snowfall forecasts for a few locations. In the Charlotte area, I'm gonna forecast about five inches of snow. That's above our average though of 3.5 inches over the entire winter season. In Hickory, I'm gonna forecast about eight inches of snow. That's a little bit more than Charlotte, but much more than average in Hickory as well. Their average is only about 6.9 inches of snow. Now in the mountains in Boone, we're talking at least 33 inches of snow which is a lot of snow for Boone, but that's only above their average of 25 and a half inches for the entire winter season. So when we do get snow in Charlotte, one of the ways we communicate the impacts of that snow on your life is our snow meter. We've been using this for years. And one of the ways we communicate that is on a zero to 10 scale of the impacts on your life from winter weather. We start at the low end, zero to three. This is what I like to call social media rumors. This is where people talk about the chance of snow, but honestly, probably not gonna amount to a whole lot. As you move up the scale from four to seven, this is where things get a little more interesting, legit snow chances. And we actually start to see people go to the grocery store and buy up all the bread and milk. Things start to close down, schools, businesses, a lot of virtual and remote work nowadays. As you move to the high end, seven to 10, this is where the heavy snow moves in. We haven't seen this very often, but you need a shovel and you need a sled because you actually can have to shovel out the driveway and you can sled on some real snow. As you know, it doesn't take much snow to cause issues on the roads. Even an inch can cover the roads completely. You get to three inches, starts covering up the bottom of your tire, makes it difficult to travel. Once you get to six inches, you're gonna be hitting your hubcap or your wheel cover, and it's gonna take about 200 feet to stop, and travel's gonna be really, really difficult. If we ever see a foot or two of snow, you're talking up here, maybe all the way halfway up your tire or more. It's difficult to travel at all, and probably better off just to stay at home and hunker down. Wow, I was enthralled. I'm sorry, that was my watching face. <laughs> yeah. Um, particularly the snow forecasting. So yeah. five, that's above average what you said, the, the changing averages because of the- Yeah, and, and I should say that's over a whole season. It's not all at once, right? It's three and yeah. a half inches are average. So five inches spread out over the whole year. Just to give you a perspective, last year we had 4.3. So it's just a little Similar. bit more than last okay. year. Now, people always ask me, you know, La Nina is a, a big part of this. If you want to learn more about this or watch this again, uh, you can go to our weather IQ page and we have a whole bunch of videos there about different types of weather phenomena, but that's on our YouTube channel. Go check that out. Now, some of the things we look at for that winter weather forecast beyond La Nina are these other factors. So it's just not a couple of simple things. One of the things we look at right now, there we go. We can show that graphic full screen. There we go. You can see that we look at temperatures in the uh, Arctic. We look at uh, basically the sea surface temperature. We look at snowfall in Siberia, believe it or not. That's a really strong indicator. So the forecast this season again, warm and dry for the Carolinas. But as we mentioned, La Nina typically is 
less snowfall, but there's been a couple distinct years, 2010, 11, 17, 18, and then last year, all ended up with above average snowfall. So I think we could see a very similar pattern to that in the upcoming winter. Again, we'll have a full discussion on this coming up on Monday as well. So if you have questions about the winter weather forecast, stay tuned for that on Monday. We'll be doing a live chat where you can ask those questions uh, online.